Okay, hello and welcome to the webinar. My name is Viktor Nusroev, so you, I believe you know me. I conducted many webinars on forexbot.com. So can you please write um, if you... Can you please write uh, if you can hear me and if you can see me, if everything is okay and we can start the webinar. Okay, sound and picture is good. Uh, hi, Christian. Uh, could you remind me uh, where are you from? From Denmark. Okay, good. Okay, guys, and um, so maybe you know I'm from Russia. And uh, so I conducted the webinar. Um, uh, mainly about uh, 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 trading with the help of expert advisors. <laughs> oh, yeah, Christian, you can hear that uh, I'm Russian because of my English accent. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to improve it, but uh, uh, generally speaking, there are so many Russians who speak with a really poor accent. So mine is not uh, the worst one. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, looks like there are not so many attendees. Maybe because it's uh, the beginning of summer, so everybody goes to to the beach. Uh, as for me, where I live, the temperature is about just plus uh, 19 degrees. Oh, pl plus plus 11 degrees. It was 19 yesterday, so now now it's just plus 11. Oh, yeah. So uh, let's wait until other attenders come. So uh, let me show you something. So I hope many of you uh, watched my course uh, how to optimize expert advisors in MetaTrader 4. So and there I provided you with, with an expert advisor which is called Stomper. Uh, let's check how it worked uh, through uh, in, um, in this year, from January to the end of March or to the end of May. So that was a test on a British pound against Swiss franc. So here are the results. It trades really good with just a few losing trades. So the total profit um, is um, 200 and a half, 250, with a maximal drawdown about $77. So that's a good result. I also uh, liked how it, um, how it traded Euro GBP. But we can check it now. Okay, there is one more thing I want you to share with you at this webinar. I'm actually before the webinar. That's an indicator I found in internet. Uh, there was um, such an indicator that uh, we created together with Kirill Irmenko. So he create. Uh, uh, we needed to check what was the spread. Uh, during night hours, and that's why I asked Kirill to create a spread writer to monitor the spread, and he did, and we successfully uh, used it on many accounts to compare the brokers. Okay, so this is how Stomper performed on EuroGPP. So there was a period where it didn't get any money from uh, the end of February to the middle of May, and then it was a few successful trades. Yes, Christian, this indicator will be found on the Facebook in the private group. Okay, so the indicator I want to share with you today is IND monitoring spread. It uh, shows the current spread. So. 
Okay, let's do like this. This is Euro USD and one time frame. And uh, this indicator shows what was the spread. Um, the red color, the red color shows the minimal spread. Uh, green is an average one, and blue is the maximum. What was the maximal spread during this time? Um, so if you want to check what is uh, the night spread, uh, spread, I mean, I mean, what is the spread during night hours, you can uh, open, for example, if you trade Euro GBP and one time frame, then then you can uh, apply this indicator to the chart okay good and then you will see so uh, also you can leave your terminal working during night hours and then you will um, uh, check from this histogram so what was the maximum spread what was uh, the average what was the minimal so i want you to uh, take into account the average value of the spread so for example here we can see that the average one is 23 actually this terminal is not for trading it's um, it is provided by meta quotes that's why all the spreads are higher than you can find um, uh, from different brokers so they are almost um, five to ten pips higher than usual and i use this um, um i use this terminal just to conduct the webinars to optimize my expert advisors so for some basic stuff not to trade anyway so uh, another thing i suggest is to run your MetaTrader 4 on uh, VPS. So, for example, you can rent a VPS. Uh, moreover, if I'm not mistaken, Kirill created a course about uh, how to choose VPS for Forex trading or something like that. So, yeah, you can rent a VPS and then uh, run your terminal. So that's why you don't need to um, uh, that's why you don't need your computer to work at night. Everything will be um, on WPS. Okay, so not so many attendees the right today. Okay, so by the way, do you have any questions for me regarding my course? Uh, um, optimizing expert advisors in MetaTrader 4 or maybe regarding our previous webinars. If yes, don't hesitate to ask before we start. Uh, you see the spread works, it shows the average amount. Uh, okay, I just want to repeat once again, the red one is the minimal value. The green one is average and the blue one is um, the maximum. However, it's recommended to open a one time frame to get the full picture. And uh, maybe you will find that um, um, that the period of uh, high spread during night hours is just only for 10 minutes. So just simply avoid trading in these 10 minutes and everything should be fine. Okay, so we are waiting for more people to come. Uh, I will share this indicator in um, our Facebook private trading group, so that's not a problem. Okay, so I think it's time to start.
So once again, hello everyone. Thank you for joining this webinar. My name is Victor Neustroyev. You know, I believe you know me. Uh, I'm a private trader and since 2003 I've been trading financial markets, starting with Forex. Then I broadened my horizons to commodity markets. Now I uh, specialize on agricultural markets. I consider them to be more transparent. But I also trade Forex and I have a few strategies that work. So that's why I conduct uh, the webinars on Forex topic for you. So this webinar is recording and you can watch the record of the webinar later on forexbot.com. Please read the disclaimer. Okay, so today I will explain you how to combine technical and fundamental analysis. Um, you may know that technical analysis is different from fundamental analysis. And uh, speaking about technical analysis, it involves lo looking purely at market prices and patterns. And fundamental in uh, analysis involves uh, some research into what is driving the price of the market. Uh, they, they, these two, both analyses, can be combined or used independently. But actually, of course, there are traders who solely use technical analysis and others who are purely fundamental traders, but uh, you can um, get better results if you combine them both. Okay, I hope you read the disclaimer. Okay, so this webinar is devoted to Forex, but um, because I also trade other markets, I can just share what I think regarding fundamental analysis. So, um, Forex is mainly um, where technical analysis work. But um, there are some markets where it's better to trade only with the help of fundamental analysis. For example, as I mentioned, it, um, they are agricultural markets, so I trade futures or and options on futures on agricultural commodities. Um, uh, fundamental far factors uh, work there because there is a supply and demand. For example, if speaking about corn or wheat prices, um, there are producers of corn, uh, mainly in the uh, United States, and um, there, are, there is a consumption in the United States, and uh, of course, uh, America exports some of the corn produced there. So to, to define what is their uh, what is the correct price? So, how, what is what the price should be? We should compare uh, the um, the supply and demand. And if there is something wrong with the supply, for example, the weather is poor, like uh, the crop was damaged, and so on, um, then we can um, make a conclusion that the price is going to rise because uh, the supply is going to uh, drop significantly, especially if there was a damage to the crop. So that's why when we analyze commodity markets, we mainly uh, look for uh, factors that affect supply and demand. Mainly supply because it affects the market significantly. But uh, we are talking about forex, and here we can't do the same thing. Um, uh, that's why when we trade forex, we should focus mainly on news and uh, economic releases. Okay, let's start. I'm going to turn off my camera. Now you can see only the screen. So this is the topic of the webinar, and this is our plan.
So we are going to talk about advantages and disadvantages of technical and fundamental analysis, uh, then the difference between them, so why it is important to apply both types of analysis, what it gives to you, um, which type of analysis can be applied to a certain strategy, and at the same time, what news to monitor, and of course, um, news uh, may differ be for range traders and breakout traders. Then uh, I will also, during the webinar, I will also demonstrate you with technical tools to combine with fundamental analysis. And if you have any questions, you can ask them anytime you want. Um, I can stop and then answer the questions and then continue the webinar, so that's okay. So let's start with uh, technical analysis advantages and disadvantages. So you know, technical versus fundamental analysis has been a long-standing debate amongst investors, but for day trading or short-term trading, technical analysis is the way to go. So you know, technical analysis is the study price charts and basically any information that can be compiled from them, such as volume analysis, cycles, trades and statistics. We use technical analysis to forecast price movements, as well as to find um, points of entry and exits from trades. So first, uh, the first advantage of uh, technical analysis is that it provides all current information. The current price reflects all currently known information about an asset. Of course, there can be rumors on the market that the price will surge or decrease, but the current price is the balancing point for all information. When we trade using technical analysis, the only information we need is a price chart, since all information and perceptions of value are recorded in the price fluctuations on that chart. And there is no need to, conserve your, to, to concern yourself with why a price is falling or rising. The fact that it is, it tells you that uh, there is more selling interest than buying interest, or more buying interest than selling interest. So this makes trading much simpler because with technical analysis we are focused on the price chart, no need to analyze economic data and news releases. It's all reflected in the price anyway. Uh, so the second advantage is that prices move in trends. If prices just move widely and randomly, it would be very hard to make money. Sometimes nobody can explain what happens in the market, but overall prices typically move in trends. There is a directional bias to the price, which provides traders with an advantage. Uh, much of technical analysis is about determining when a trend is in place or if there is no trend at the moment. So, you know that most profitable trading methods used by, by traders are trend following strategies. That means you isolate the trend and then you find opportunities to enter in the same direction as the trend. So for example here, you can find that there is a trend, there is a downtrend on Euro USD. So and your task is to find a point to enter in, in the same direction. Trends are where traders make money and it doesn't matter whether they are short-term or long-term traders. 
So the technical analysis just provide you with such tools to define the trend. So the second uh, or oh, the third thing, the third advantage is that history repeats itself. And you know, technical analysis is largely based on uncovering common patterns. And your task is to find these patterns again and again and use them to trade. Um, this doesn't mean that the history repeats exactly. For example, you may know from my previous webinars that some markets usually are flat during night hours. Please look at um, this chart of British pound against Swiss franc. Almost every night the market is flat and you can try to make a profit from it by applying a range trading strategy with a timing filter. But you should understand that history repeats in a general way, not necessarily producing an exact replica of prior pattern. So the fourth one is timing. A major advantage of technical analysis is that it provides you with ways to time your trades. With a fundamental approach, your research may find some interesting news, news concerning certain economy that you think may cause a price drop in the future. But, but when? With technical analysis, you can wait and find an exact time to enter and exit the market. So, for example, here, look at this chart. Here, by means of technical analysis, such as resistance level, we found a point to enter the market. So, we can um, open a short trade here, and then here, after the price bounces back from the resistance level. And one more thing, uh, um, once you learn technical analysis, you can apply many of the concepts to multiple currency pairs, uh, especially to those which can relate with each other. For example, EURUSD and uh, British pound against American dollar. Of course, it depends on the currency pair you trade, but you don't have to learn how to analyze every market specifically. And uh, technical analysis can be used on any time frame, whether you trade daily or weekly charts. So we use the same tools, the same principles. Now let's talk about uh, disadvantages of technical analysis. So the first one is controversial conclusions. How many people? Uh, so many opinions. Technical indicators may show the signals and different traders may interpret them exactly the opposite. Uh, one technical analyst uh, may contradict another uh, for the same market. And of course, the technical methods that are used to analyze markets can vary from one analyst to another. That's why the analysts at the investment bank, for example, come true only in 60% of cases. However, 60 is a good result. If you can achieve it, then that you're really a good trader. Another disadvantage is time lag. Unfortunately, the signals can be delayed and that's why the trader may also be late in decision. So, for example, uh, we got a signal, but uh, it's too late to enter the market. So the indicators usually show us what has happened in the market, but they don't show what will happen. 
the only possible way to trade, I think, is to look for certain trading patterns and then hope that the same pattern is going to be formed. Okay, so also there is a third disadvantage, which is exceptions. Uh, technical analysis doesn't work in 100% of cases. Uh, maybe you saw the build of the pattern, but some external factors can affect the market and the trade may become a losing trade. Also, there are periods of high volatility in the market. Let's imagine that you have a profitable trading strategy and it provides you with the signals from time to time. And once the level of volatility increased because of financial crisis or something like that, so that your strategy started to provide you with more signals than usual because of high volatility. And of course, many of them became losing trades. Sometimes you can get false signals from your technical indicators. Uh, I can call it informational noise. Technical analysis is very subjective. Uh, it may seem on the chart that there is a signal to enter the market, but in fact, it can be only a noise that can be tracked only on large time frames. It's okay to increase the accuracy of the signals by applying many other filters. However, sometimes it's not a good decision because it reduces the number of entry signals into the market. So generally speaking, technical analysis is the preferred tool for traders, especially if they trade Forex. You can implement the methods in multiple markets and timeframes if you want, but you should understand that Technical analysis works not on, not in 100% of cases. And if you learn how to apply it, probably you can predict the market in 60% of cases, and it will be enough to build a profitable strategy. And fundamental analysis is an analysis based on global and red, uh, on global economy and uh, on um, economic, political, and security factors. And of course, on the conditions that differ depending on the country, the currency we trade. For example, if we trade um, uh, euro against American dollar, we should analyze all the factors that can affect American dollar and euro. And um, it means that when analyzing what would happen with euro, we should uh, pay more attention to the countries in uh, European Union, which has uh, which have um, a large weight there. So, for example, such as Germany, France. Uh, maybe Italy and Spain. Now, let's now talk about advantages and disadvantages of fundamental analysis. So when you um, apply fundamental analysis, you use analytical methods. These methods are based on economic data and it eliminates the room for personal bias. Another advantage is that it's 360 degree focus. Fundamental analysis also considers long-term economic, political trends and other market sentiment. When you apply fundamental analysis, it is also a systematic approach for determining the price. 
when we analyze a certain currency pair, we look at this market from different sides, trying to take into account all the factors that can affect this market. And at the same time, there is no subjectivity. For example, we know that if unemployment rate increases in America, uh, in the United States, it can affect American dollar in a negative way. And of course, fundamental analysis helps us to understand the market better. That's quite important to see the general picture of the market and what factors currently drive the market. Of course, there are a few disadvantages of applying fundamental analysis. It's time consuming. So taking into account all the factors that can affect the market takes so much time. At the same time, it can get complicated and may need a lot of hard work to start with. Also, assumptions play a vital role in focusing the financial markets. So it's important to consider the best and the worst case scenario and unexpected negative economic or political changes may cause some problems. Okay, so do, if you have any questions regarding uh, fundamental analysis, don't hesitate to ask them, but uh, let me try to sum it up. So any changes in the key fundamental factors can gradually alter the achievable result of the anal analysis. At the same time, it's a time consuming process. Maybe uh, you don't have to deepen the details with fundamental analysis and you can trade successfully without it. But uh, in this webinar, I'm going to show you how to combine both types of analysis and save your time. So, um, While technical analysis can be performed on any chart, fundamental analysis um, um, uh, or um, the study of actual components of the economy that represents a currency can be quite a bit more subjective. Uh, by saying subjective, I mean that um, for each uh, country, it um, it has uh, its own factors to analyze. But generally, the factors and the indicators are the same. But oh, I can say that it depends on the country. But generally, they are the same. So. Usually, um, usually forex traders apply only technical analysis, but uh, by combining them together, um, so I, I mean, uh, when you have a strategy, you have you can combine some elements of technical and fundamental analysis together um, to to analyze the market from different sides and to understand what is happening uh, in the market right now. Okay, so let's just try to compare our technical analysis and the fundamental analysis once again. So technical analysis focuses on charts and price and past price behavior. At the same time, fundamental analysis concentrates on the financial drivers of the economy of a certain um, country or on a global economy. Traders incorporate indicators and tools, and traders who use fundamental analysis follow news announcements and data releases. To to focus the price, traders attempt uh, to um, traders attempt to anticipate future price um, using past price behavior. And fundamental traders 
uh, belief sentiment drives the market. So they look at news, release, uh, news releases and economic data to understand what is the sentiment in the markets, what investors and other traders are waiting for. Okay, and one more table to compare fundamental and technical analysis. So, in fundamental analysis, future price, or uh, when we are speaking about Forex, it's uh, not the price but future direction, is calculated using economic factors. And when uh, in technical analysis, we use historical price movements to predict future price. It's better to apply fundamental analysis when you trade in uh, long term. And if you're a short term trader, so it's better to apply just technical analysis because well, let's imagine you trade on M15 time frame and there is no news or any other um, events releases. So there is nothing to look for. That's why you can apply only technical analysis there. In fundamental analysis, we analyze only news release and economic data. However, when we um, work with technical analysis, we only look at charts and uh, analyze the current price and the past price. So, uh, fundamental analysis works better for investors, especially long-term investors, and technical analysis is mainly for traders. Uh, there is a difference when um, technical and fundamental trader open a trade. So, um, speaking about long trade, uh, trader, a fundamental trader opens it when uh, he believes that positive factors prevail in the market. Like, for example, um, GDP grows, it means that um, the market is going, no, the, um, the currency is going to increase. And when technical trader open a long trade, he believes that he can sell this asset for a higher price. Uh, the same thing happens with the short trade. Fundamental trader believes that negative factors prevail in the market and technical trader just believes that he, he can buy it for a lower price. This slide shows just some of what traders are looking for in regards to technical analysis. Uh, look at uh, this slide. So here we, um, this is what, what usually we can see from a trader's view if um, uh, that's a trader who uses only technical analysis. There are some indicators like uh, zigzag. Here you can see there these violet lines. Also, there are support resistance levels, and uh, no, sometimes it's a trend line which defines the trend. But here I applied a linear regression. So the market is currently in downtrend, and linear regression indicator confirms it. However, there was a correction but you, you see that the price didn't uh, reach the resistance level, so the first resistance level. And according to our view, we can open a short trade right now here or wait until the price reaches the resistance level and then open a short trade. This is what usually the, um, technical uh, trader uh, thinks about the market.
Okay, so this is what uh, a fundamental trader should analyze. Uh, if technical analysis uh, shows us what has happened in the market, fundamentals helps uh, fundamental analysis helps uh, shape future price movements. This is economic calendar. By the way, you can find the calendar on forexbot.com, but uh, I took a different one. Uh, however, I, I like I like the calendar on forexbot.com. It's um, quite detailed, and if you click there on there um, on a certain news release, you can um, uh, you can find the details there and the description of this release. Uh, okay, as news releases and additional data filters into the market, traders will accordingly bid prices higher or lower to account for this new information. News releases can often function as a motivator to market, stimulating future price movements. As such, this leads many to the conclusion that um, news releases can bring considerable volatility into the market and trading based on fundamentals doesn't necessarily mean that you need to trade the news. So if you're going to implement fundamental analysis um, in your technical um, strat strategy, um, I, I want you to filter news releases. So choose only um, uh, news which um, which have high or medium impact on the market, and only choose news affecting currencies that you trade. For example, if you don't trade uh, British pound. So you don't have to analyze it. But it uh, doesn't matter which currency pair you trade, you have to analyze um, all news releases from United States. OK. Uh, Traders can use what they have already built in regards to technical analysis to plan and approach around news releases. So after the trader filtered the calendar, he can plot his game plan accordingly. So for example, here we trade only Euro, Canadian uh, dollar, uh, British pound. So and Uh, there are two, well, actually three types of traders, breakout traders, range, trade, tra range traders, and trend following traders. Uh, breakout traders often want to trade around important events. So they are looking only for the events which, has, uh, which have a high impact on the market. And uh, range traders look to avoid important events. So for range traders, it's better to... Uh, trade on um, events which have a medium impact on the market. Uh, the main idea is that uh, large movements can arise from uh, high impact releases and traders need to know that there's a very real prospect of being wrong and getting stopped out of uh, trade. When we want to combine uh, technical and fundamental analysis, first we need to get a technical view on the market. For traders looking to trade trends, we want to 
find uh, to define um, the direction this can be done with a price move, uh, price action oh by the way uh, one more thing i wanted to share with you Um, uh, this histogram shows us um, what are the most volatile news reports. Um, uh, the, the best one is non-farm payrolls. Uh, when, um, when it releases, the price um, moves up to uh, 150 pips. Um, if we if you look at euro USD, so it uh, fluctuates up to 150 pips. Uh, then it forms decision, and um, it uh, usually during such decisions um, the price can fluctuate significantly or less it depends on their expectations so but in average it's about 60 pips trade balance 70 pips consumer price index 60 around 60 pips and retail sales around 80 pips so when um, it's um, us retail sales uh, is published the market, uh, especially if it differs from expectations, uh, the market, uh, I mean, Euro USD can fluctuate up to 80 pips or maybe more. In average, it's 80. Okay, well, once again, well, um, first we need to get a technical view of the market. And for traders looking to trade trends, uh, we want to see the direction. This can be done with price action. Uh, for for uptrends, this can be a series of higher highs and higher lows, as you can see it here. And for downtrends, a series of lower lows and lower highs. When, trader, when traders see these types of trends, they're seeing a, a bias in the sentiment of that market. Uh, during a downtrend, the direction, so the market goes lower and lower, and during an uptrend, uh, the market goes up, so the direction is up. And during these situations, it's not just enough to buy or sell and hope that we are on the right side of the trade. Traders should look to buy uptrends cheaply with price at support or look to sell downtrends expensive when price is near resistance. Traders can use any mechanism of identify support or resistance to assist with this process. But Um, of course, um, we should understand that uh, we, we realize that trends can reverse at any time. So to integrate fundamentals into this approach, the trader should look at the economic calendar as an opportunity to buy cheaply and sell expensively. The trader is looking to take advantage of an overreaction to news announcement that allows for an opportunity to enter in the long-term market. So, for example, here you can see there was an uptrend in the market and then unexpectedly there was a, a news released and um, the price went down and it helped us to enter the market uh, at a ch cheap price. So, enter the market cheaply here. That's why then the trend continued. It was a strong trend, of course. 
so and we could uh, gain some profit Okay, so in other words, traders should look to react to the reaction of the market, or to the reaction of um, um, market participants, how they react to the news releases. And traders taking the position towards trends going into fundamental data releases are doing just that. So. The, um, as for this exact day, there was a consumer price index released and it exceeded expectations. That's why EURUSD raised, raised significantly. I mean, uh, no, it's... Uh, um, it dropped significantly, but then it, uh, an uptrend continued. In this chart, there was a Canadian GBP published and it came below expectations, what means that uh, uh, USD against Canadian dollar increased. So the value of Canadian dollar decreased, that's why USD Canadian rate increased. So there was a downtrend and then here looks like uh, we lost uh, our chance to enter the market, but then because of uh, this news release, we had a chance. There was an overreaction and we used it. By the way, is it, uh, is it clear or do you need more explanation? Okay, Christian, it's okay. Okay. Uh, let's continue. So now let's speak about range traders. So for traders uh, looking to trade ranges and breakouts, the integration of fundamentals and technicals will be slightly different. Um, since there can be no direction in the market during these news and data releases. However, the motive is much the same. Traders anticipate volatility coming from the news release and they look to use, uh, to use this increase to their advantage. Uh, range traders should remain cautious when going into news releases uh, because uh, since additional volatility could break support uh, and resistance with which they are using to set their stops. However, they can still look to take advantage of overreaction to news. Uh, for example, here uh, there is a range trading strategy. Uh, let's imagine that a range trader um, draw this support and resistance level and they and he trades when the market uh, bounces back from one of the boundaries for example when the price comes closer to one of the boundaries and there is a uh, economic release which has a medium or light effect uh, on the market a uh, range trader can prepare um, can be prepared to open the position so for example there was a release uh, like here and the price uh, went uh, down slightly and 
but um, the, this news release uh, didn't have a significant impact on the market. That's why um, uh, the market is likely not to no, the market is unlikely to break the support level. So that's why here a range trader can open a long trade. Okay, for breakout traders, uh, the situation is a little bit different. Uh, these traders should look for um, for news releases which uh, have uh, high impact on on the market. So traders in these situations would want to wait for news or data to cause a price to go to support and resistance levels. And once a test of either of these levels, you can look to buy or sell accordingly. For example, for breakout traders, uh, if there is a news which um, have a high impact on market, you can. Um, Uh, they they can look to use their reaction to the news event so for example uh, they can set um, sell stop or buy stop here and here and um, wait if, um, oh, for example, if the market is closer to the um, upper boundary, then we only set a um, buy stop order here. And if, for example, it breaks the channel, then uh, because of um, uh, the high impact on the market, the price would go up. The same thing when the price is uh, close to uh, the down boundary and we're expecting a high impact news release, we should uh, open sell stop and wait uh, until it, um, it is executed. Okay, Christian, um, it's a good, uh, a good remark. I will try to um, to exclude it. Um, I mean, uh, I'm looking at the plan, and then I uh, so okay. I I, I got you. So. Um, I'm looking at the plan and I'm explaining the charts so because s sometimes it's difficult to find uh, right words because uh, English is not a uh, native language for me so that's why for example if I forget a word then I need to find the synonym that's why I have some breaks in my speech So is it clear how to trade with the help of fundamental analysis and how to implement it into your technical trading strategy? So if you have any questions, you can ask them now. Um, 
but actually that was what I wanted to tell you in this webinar. So for, did you understand how to trade the overreaction here? So how to uh, find, uh, no, actually it's, it depends on your trading strategy, how to find, um, um, how to define the trend to future direction of the market. But I just want you to understand that uh, um, you can implement fundamentals. For example, you can wait until um, uh, high impact news release affect the market and the price um, can get higher so you can um, open a trade on a better price and then the, the downtrend will continue so for range traders please look at only news that have medium impact on the market because uh, if the news has a significant or high impact on the market it can break the channel and for breakout traders you should look only for news which have a high impact on the market and in such cases, I recommend you to um, to set sell stop or buy stop. Uh, sell stop if the price is closer to the down boundary, and buy stop if the price is closer to the upper boundary during um, the news release. Okay, so actually that was all I was um, I wanted to tell you on this webinar. So I'm going to run a poll. Uh, please vote. Where? Uh, how satisfied are you from the webinar when one is bad and five is excellent? Okay, so just I um, will repeat, trend traders can trade an overreaction of the market participants to a certain economic release and open the trade in the direction of the main trend. Breakout traders can set buy stop and sell stop orders outside the channel in anticipation of their important news releases to the releases which have a significant impact on the market. Range traders can open the trades inside the channel, but only when they expect a slight increase of volatility. In this case, we look for medium important news in the calendar. Because if the news has a high impact on the market, the price can break support and resistance level. So it doesn't matter what kind of trader you are, you can implement fundamental analysis to your technical trading strategy, and it's likely to increase the profitability of your trades. If you can do everything correctly, you would be able to enter the market at better price and avoid cases when you close the trade by stop loss because of unexpectedly raised volatility. Okay, so thank you for voting. I'm going to close the poll. If there are any questions you may ask, um, if you you can also ask them later, for example, on, in our Facebook private trading group, I will also provide you with um, with the indicator I demonstrated in the beginning of the webinar. Let me show it once again. So this indicator uh, monitors the spread on EURUSD.
the, uh, the, this histogram. So the red uh, color shows the minimal spread, the green one shows the average spread, and the blue one shows um, high spread, oh, I mean the maximal spread. So here you can see the same thing. So how to, I, I suggest you to uh, apply this indicator to a one time frame. like this okay so and then you can monitor what is um, the spread during night hours or any other hours so um, it's um, it's important because it helps you to compare you know to compare the brokers and choose the one which um, provides you with the better conditions Okay, thank you for your attention. If there is no questions, then see you on the next webinar. By the way, the webinar was recorded and uh, the, the record of this webinar will be uploaded to forexbot.com. Thank you and bye.